Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to Cafecito with Pinky. We are going to sit and have a conversation, something that's been coming up lately, and I wanted to address it. Um, it is something that me and a few of my colleagues that are in the same practice have been talking about. We do get asked that very often, which is the threefold law. What do we think of it? Do we practice it? Um, and for some of you guys that are new, what does it mean? So we'll go into it. Go ahead and grab your cafecito, grab your wine, your whiskey, your whatever you prefer to drink. Take a seat with me and let's have a conversation. So for those of you guys that are new, uh, the threefold law is a practice that is implemented in the esoteric, depending on, you know, what branch you practice. Um, for a lot of practitioners, there is something that is taught, um, especially for those that are in private sectors, whether it's like uh, you practice Santeria, Hoodoo, Voodoo, um, Wicca, Paganism, whatever it is that your practice is. Um, I hear it more in the Pagan community as well as in, um, as well as, you know, Brujeria in, at least for myself, in the Mexican community or Latin community. Um, and basically what it means is that it's a belief system that is put in place to make us understand the consequences of law and effect. That's what it is, basically. Whatever we put out comes back to us. Um, and it is a question that, you know, like I said, me and my friends, my colleagues, we were, you know, having a conversation. It is something that we often get asked. As for myself, I get that I get asked that on Instagram as well as on Snapchat. Um, and it's something that I wanted to make a video about because I wanted to go a little bit deep into this. Um, so like I said, in the practice, it is something that is implemented depending on, you know, who's teaching you usually, um, in this community, you are either raised in this belief system um, or you're taught this. Basically, someone comes along and sees certain gifts in you and they want to enhance, obviously, their coven or their group. Um, so they take you basically under their wing, uh, etc. I'm not going to go deep into, you know, uh, the secret practices. But um, so this rule, the threefold law rule is basically teaching us that whatever it is that we put out is exactly what we will get in return. Um, and yes, a lot of practitioners do, in fact, um, implement this in their practice. I, on a personal level, do not. And here's the thing about it. Uh, when clients or subscribers or followers um, ask me about this, I always... Um, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I always, always encourage everyone to find themselves. What do I mean by this? Whenever you are going into whatever it is that you're going into, it doesn't have to be practice. It doesn't have to be the esoteric, whatever it is that you're getting into, right? Let's say you're going to college or let's say you just started a new job. I'm sure you guys all have experienced someone come along, right? I'll give you an example. I'll speak for myself. When I was uh, working the, you know, corporate, um, when I was working in the corporate ladder, basically, I was very young. At a very young age, I was put in positions that were very good positions or even positions of power. And of course, you're always going to have someone, you know, uh, a colleague or a um, someone that works there, right? Um another employee that is threatened by you or that has been there for a very long time. And then this new new person comes in. Um, they see me much more younger. They see you as immature. They create all of these assumptions about you, essentially. Um, but more than anything, I feel like a lot of the times they feel threatened, right? So I'm sure you guys have all experienced, like I said, I'm giving you an example in, in the workplace. Um, so I experienced that multitude of times, people coming to me and being like, oh, you know, um, we heard that you, you know, probably knew someone when you came in here. Um, 
assuming that it was handed to me, the position was handed to me or whatever. Of course, I'm not knowing nothing about me, right? Um, and then, you know, when I would, as, as soon as they got to know me a little bit better, um, they knew that I had my sights in continuing to grow and continuing to expand and go up the ladder. And like I said, I'm sure you guys all have experienced someone come and tell you, oh, it's not possible. Or, you know, the last person that got, you know, a higher ranking position, it took them almost 10 years. You know, you've been here for only two years, Jessica, like relax, like that type of, you know, those type of comments. And the reason why I'm giving you this example is because, like I said, you can apply this in every single aspect of your life. We will take it a little bit more on the everyday basis, right? If you, like many, you know, out there have been raised um, by women, I'll give you an example. I deal with a lot of clients that, you know, uh, they've been raised by women. Usually the man um, or the father figure is absent or is not around. Um, so, and, and this is something generational, meaning that it's not just with them, it's not just with their mothers, it's, it's, it goes way back. Um, so they come to me and they, you know, immediately assume, well, you know, one of their biggest fears is, you know, I don't want to end up alone or I don't want to end up, you know, like my mother or like my grandmother or like all my sisters or like all my aunts type of energy. Um, and again, I'm, I'm generalizing, right? I'm giving you guys different examples. Um, doesn't have to be about the practices in every single aspect of your life. You can apply this in every aspect. But what I'm saying is that at the end of the day, the bottom of the bottom, right? It comes down to your belief. Your beliefs is what creates your reality. It's what creates your limits. It's what creates your limiting beliefs as well. Because yes, there is such a thing as, you know, cause and effect. There is such a thing as, you know, boomerang effect. Um, but throughout the many years that I've been practicing, um, I've learned and this is something that not only through experience, not only through trial and error, not only through hands-on experience, but also on a spiritual aspect when astral projecting, I've been shown that a lot of the times when you think that you are making a decision, it is an experience that you have already experienced because we are living in a multidimensional uh, universe where there is a higher version of yourself. And what I mean by this, and I, I'm trying not to confuse you guys, um, you know, my Mercury is in Sagittarius, so I go into it very broadly and very deep. And sometimes I get it. Sometimes people get confused. But my point to this is this. I've been shown, like I said, not only through experience, not only through trial and error, but on a spiritual level, I've been shown how karma works and though you may think that in the moment as an example we're going to apply this you know to the practice let's just say i have a client that comes to me and they have been put through the ringer they have you know there is a person that is creating just chaos in their life torment in their life um and they're seeking my advice, they're seeking my guidance, I will always, and those of you guys that have been following me for a long time, you know that I keep it 100% when it comes, when it comes to the practice, when it comes to what I do, there are certain lines I do not cross. And it is not because I feel like I am better or less than, it, it's just because, again, we go back to, it comes down to your beliefs. And I am extremely passionate and extremely, uh, ex I, I stand very strongly behind my convictions. So that's the reason why there's certain things that I do not do. Um, but as an example, what I'm telling you, uh, this person is needing guidance and they are, another person is purposely harming them. At that point in time, I will basically give them their options. I will be like, well, you know, 
from what I'm seeing, if I'm being shown that they are in fact doing spell work on them or whatever, you know, there is a way of cleansing and removing that. We can go that route. Or if you want to protect yourself, meaning from further um, backlash or from further them continuing whatever, um, then you have this option. And I see that as defense magic, okay? Now, I'm not going to go deep into like the different types of magic, but to me, and we go back to my belief system, to each their own, and this is why I highly encourage everyone that whether you're a baby witch, whether you are just learning, whether you're just diving into spirituality itself, what whatever aspect in your life you are in, it is crucial and very important to find yourself and you can only do that through doing shadow work okay and I'll go a little bit deeper into that in a bit but back to the subject um so when I give them those options I right as a spectator as I am outside looking in I see it as defense magic because they have every single right to protect themselves to protect their loved ones to do whatever means necessary to make sure that their path is not pushed down a different path because of interference. So at that point, I am very strong on that conviction. So when I do in fact do these types of workings, the client will get immediate results. So it comes down to your beliefs, what you believe in now. This is not on a superficial level, you guys, and I really want you guys to, when you're listening to this, to really think about it because this is why I explain shadow work is crucial in the practice, okay? Not a lot of practitioners will stress this enough, and I do, and there's a reason why I did a shadow book journal. There is a reason why I've done manifestation uh, books where I explain not only how to manifest, but also um, how to change your way of thinking, your way of vibrating, your way of raising that vibration. Um, and, and it comes down to your beliefs. Now, you can sit there, and I actually have a, uh, a friend of mine that is a practitioner himself, and he, you know, we've been talking about this where, he was mentioning to me that a lot of the times um, he kind of feels lost when it comes to like shadow work, when it comes to uh, he couldn't connect uh, the purpose or the meaning behind the shadow aspect. So I kind of di dive deep into it with him. We've been having amazing conversations about this. Um, but the, the most simplistic way of me saying this is because it is crucial to your belief system and the deeper you go into it, the more awakened you become to realize that a lot of your beliefs, a lot of who you think you are, a lot of your way of responding and reacting to certain situations and circumstances in your life has very little to do with you and everything to do with your environment, with how you were raised, with how you were taught, with what, you know, belief systems were taught to you in early childhood and early conditioning and that's how our ego is built from from that early childhood stage that's how it starts to become what you are now and it's not to say a lot of people say that ego is a bad thing it is not a bad thing it is a blessing it is a think of it as a defense mechanism um it is beautiful right if you use ego in the very positive way it what drives you it's what's going to drive you what's going to keep you passionate and intense and focused on the things that you're wanting to achieve there's nothing wrong with ego um but it is wrong when you're vibrating just from that ego aspect and again we go back to it has a lot to do with what you've been taught what you've seen what you've experienced it's the same thing as when you're trying to manifest a lot of the times and oftentimes people will tell me, well, I, I'm having a very difficult time manifesting. I do all my affirmations. I do all of my meditation. And the simplest way of saying it is 
I can sit here and tell you, like literally and legit, I can sit here and tell you exactly what tools to use. But if you do not have a deeper connection to those tools, a deeper understanding of why you're using them or why you are implementing them in your manifestation process, you will fail. And it comes down to what your brain, what your subconscious takes in and genuinely believes. Therefore, it creates a belief, a belief system. And that belief system is what creates faith. It is what creates um that shadow aspect of ourselves that sometimes we have difficulty believing because we have so much healing to do. So when we talk about the threefold law, again, many practitioners do implement it. Many of us do not. I do not. Like I said, and the reasoning for that is because I am passionately in my conviction of believing that sometimes you going out of your way, whether it's to protect you, protect your family, whether it's to protect a client like myself, I am doing what I believe is the honorable thing to do because they themselves cannot do it. So I will do that. And at the same time, I am giving the other person, meaning the person that is doing the harm, I am giving them in experience to learn firsthand the consequences of their actions, whether they decide to take that as a lesson or whether they decide I'm going to be more petty and more messy and they keep digging themselves a hole, then that's on them. So yes, many people do implement the threefold law. I do not. But because I am passionately convicted in my convictions of understanding, it's the same thing that I tell some of my clients when someone does you bad, right? Let's just talk about relationships. When someone cheats on you continuously, they keep cheating on you, they keep mistreating you, they keep, you know, just doing all kind of foul and shady shit. Sometimes I tell my clients because then they'll come and they'll be like, I've been dealing with this person for so many years and it almost feels like my life has done a complete 180 in a very negative way. And, you know, my business is going down or my finances are going down. My health has been declining, like all kind of craziness. Right. And I tell them, have you ever sat there and thought that their lesson could have been you walking out of their life? But because you keep saving them, because life goes sour for them and then they come rushing in because they know you're going to save them. And instead of you being the one to love yourself enough to know what you deserve and what you do not, and choosing yourself and walking away or creating certain type of boundaries, instead of you doing that, what you're doing, what you're actually doing is you're taking on their karma. Because for all you know, you walking away could have been a karma that they had to deal with. It's the same thing that I get told by clients. Why is it that I'm such a pure heart? I'm honest. I'm loyal. Why do I keep being cheated on? I don't understand why God, why the universe keeps sending to me all these trashy people or these people that take me for granted or all these people that just use and abuse me, right? And they're upset at the universe or they're upset at God. Listen, we were born with free will. Right? We were born with free will. That's what distinguishes us from, as an example, archangels. I bet you guys didn't know that. <laughs> archangels do not have free will. They are here for a purpose and to serve a purpose and to execute that purpose. Anyways, if you guys are interested in that, you can comment and we can have another conversation about that. But we are born with free will. And in that free will, God or the universe is not forcing you to deal 
with horrific situations and experiences. Higher self, the universe, wants to give you nothing but what you deserve. Now that's a bold statement, right? What you deserve. This could be applied in a positive or negative. What does it come down to? When I said what you deserve, how did you feel? Did you feel like, oh shit, <laughs> it's bad? Or oh shit, it's good? In that moment, your subconscious kicked in. Why am I bringing this up? It goes down to your core belief system. You know how people like to paint as, you know, God or Jesus um, judging, right? Or the universe. Things start to go bad in your life and you're like, oh my God, what did I do wrong? Why, what, how many people have I hurt that I'm dealing with all this craziness, all this chaos? The fact that your immediate thought is to think that you're being punished speaks about how you see yourself as a human being. Well, why are you talking about this, Pinky? Because we're talking about the threefold law and I'm teaching you guys the importance of your belief system. It is not God, it is not the universe. It is not your higher self that is wanting to punish you. It only wants to give to you what you deserve. Who decides what you deserve? You do. It comes down to what you believe. It comes down to what you think you're worthy of or what you think you're not worthy of. You are the judge and the executioner. You decide based on your belief system, based on the type of person you are, and I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to, other than to remind you of the true power that you have. So we go back to the conversation of an example. Someone's been a fuck boy or someone's been a fuck girl, right? And they are just horrible human beings. And clients tell me, why do I keep dealing with that? Like, you know, God must really not love me. God has nothing to do with this. God gave you free will. The universe gave you free will. All consciousness gave you free will. The moment your soul entered your body. Yet they are not forcing you to deal with these people. They are not forcing you to choose them as your partners. They are not choosing for you. You are choosing. So let's go a little bit deeper. Look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, what is it about me that keeps attracting these types of people? Because like can only attract like. I get a lot of colleagues that reach out for spiritual guidance, as we should. I am a big advocate about that, right? A doctor cannot operate on himself. It is okay. And I know this is something like in the practice, in, in this community, people don't talk about that enough. But I'm sorry, I do. A doctor cannot operate on himself. And it's okay to reach out to someone else. It's okay to get some advice or guidance. Because we need a point of view that is away from what your current situation is. So when colleagues reach out to me, you know, and they tell me, what is it about me? I'm an empath. What is it about me that continues to only attract, you know, narcissist as an example, which I genuinely do believe that you guys are 
if you're an empath, I'm sure you came across a few narcissists. But see, the thing about that is that when you are an empath, you are born, right? You are reincarnated to be able to distinguish darkness because you are light, right? It's like alchemy. It's the transmutation. So like I tell them, just like you're capable of attracting only the, the broken and the, you know, the dark, you have the same potential to be able to look at the light. It's just that your previous experiences have taught you that you're only able to see that. Going back to the conversation of you being your own judge and executioner and the belief system and the threefold law. I've known of practitioners that have taken on or that, I should say that have refused the threefold law and their life has gone south really quick. And then they come and they reach out and they're like, what the hell? And it's quite simple. Because you genuinely don't believe in that. Because you know that it's not right based on what you believe, based on how you were raised, based on how. So it is, this is why I stress shadow work is hugely important in the practice. Not just in the practice, but in every aspect of your life. See, the thing about the practice is, and, and this could, imp this you know, the practice has many branches. Um, like I said, you could do hoodoo, you could do voodoo, you could do witchcraft, paganism, whatever it is that you do. Um, and of course, everyone has a different system. But at the core of it, it is what you believe in. I'm sure that if you've ever come across someone that is the complete opposite of who you are, meaning let's say you are a kind person, right? And you come across someone that is very selfish, very egotistical, someone that is on survival mode. They only think of themselves and do not care for anyone else. And you look at them and you look at the things they do or how they treat people around them and you can help to wonder how can they do that or how can they be this way or how can that, how can this, right? Because that's your belief system. Because that's how you were nurtured or that's how you were raised. But that's the thing. Not everyone is going to be like you. And if you keep going about life thinking that everyone is like you or that everyone processes or treats others the way you do, then you're going to be very surely disappointed. Why am I bringing this up? Because this is why shadow work is very important. Because in working through certain aspects, traits, characteristics about your person, you will quickly come to the understanding that a lot of the things that you hold dear, a lot of the things that you genuinely believe in, that you feel like you genuinely believe in, have a lot to do with how you were taught. I've came across many people that are constantly on survival mode. <clears throat> and when you are on survival mode, it, when it comes down to others or you, you're always going to choose yourself. It doesn't mean that that's a bad person. It just means that their past experiences were so horrible that they had to learn to think for themselves and to put themselves first. And they don't know how to switch that off. You know that saying, I'm sure you guys have heard, that magic is not good or bad. It comes down to the witch's heart. That is absolutely 100% true. Now, the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because I'm sure many of you guys probably don't practice. You guys probably follow my channel for the tarot readings, but 
like I said, this can be applied in every single aspect of your life. And basically the threefold law is, like I said, understanding or knowing that what we do comes back to us, right? That's the generalization of it. But the thing is that I feel that the reason why this is taught is because when you get into the practice, separate from all other religions, is that I'm sure if you are religious yourself, I'm sure you have experienced people that, you know, are Bible thumpers or people that preach about God 24-7, but they're horrible people. And I am speaking from experience. You have to keep in mind, you know, I was born and raised in Catholicism. And I'm talking about hardcore Catholicism, both on my dad's and my mother's side. And I seen that. I experienced that. People that pass the most judgment are the people that constantly want to talk to you about God. Now, the threefold law, I believe, and this is what I believe, what I've experienced, what I've seen, is that it was taught so that we can have a deeper understanding of holding ourselves accountable to the things that we do in life. And this is something that I truly believe should be taught in all religions. This is why the practice and the esoteric is very dangerous. Because if you, let's say you're on survival mode and you get into the practice and you start practicing and you start going deep into magic, you can literally drive yourself mad. I've seen it happen. I've seen people lose themselves in the dark aspect. This is why shadow work is so important. And understanding your beliefs. I Like I said, I can sit here and give you the cheat code, right, to manifesting or the cheat code to spell work or the cheat code to whatever, right? And if you do it, like I tell my clients, you can sit there and say your affirmations 20,000 times a day and it's still not going to happen if you don't believe in it. See, words are power. This is why in witchcraft, spells are called spells. Because we speak into existence. So how you talk to yourself, how you treat yourself, how you assume who you are is a reflection of what you will experience. The conversation of, you know, Dealing with clients that tell me, you know, I am such a good person. Like, why do I keep dealing with these types of people? Here's the thing. The universe does not know negative or positive. You're the one that decides that based on the experience that you're having. The universe sees that you like a specific type of person. That's what you're going to be attracting. It is up to you to learn from those lessons because if you don't learn from those lessons, you will continuously keep repeating them. And when they say, you know, I still don't understand what my lesson is in this process. It's a two-way street. So maybe that person that takes advantage of you, takes you for granted, mistreats you, cheats on you, whatever it is that they do, Maybe their lesson is to learn and experience unconditional love, which you have provided. Your lesson is self-love. It is learning about boundaries. It is learning that if you know you deserve to be treated better, you have the right to create a boundary and walk away from anything 
that gives you an experience that you do not enjoy and do not want to continue experiencing. Until you learn that, you will continuously keep experiencing that. So do I believe in the threefold law? I do not practice that. Like I said, there's certain things that I do not cross. You come to me and you want to harm someone just because? That is a line I do not cross. And every witch can do whatever they want. I'm sure there's plenty out there that would cross that line. And they are free to do as they will. But I assure you at some point in their life, those are the ones that get lost in dark magic. And I'm not passing judgment to each their, to each their own, but it's what I've seen. So understanding the importance of what your belief system is, is crucial. And like I said, you can implement this conversation in every single aspect of your life. We go back to the very early conversation about meeting people in the workplace, right? That come to you and that tell you, oh, it can be done. Or the person that came, you know, that got um, a higher position and then that's why they gave you their position had been in your position for 10 years. I was told that when I was working corporate. And you know what I did? I said, bet. And it's not to be cocky. It's not none of that. It was more so because I know what it is to work extremely hard. I am the type that will bust literally 22 hours working. If I have to, I will get it done. That's what I do. That's who I am. That's how I am built. So when someone tells me it cannot be done, and I am like intently looking at that because I want it, you telling me I'm not going to do it only drives me more. And like I said, I'm sure you guys have experienced that because I deal with that on an everyday basis with clients. You know, Pinky, they passed me over. They gave the position to someone else. It's so unfair. Or I stopped doing the work and putting effort because they were not acknowledging my hard work. There is something about you that believes you're not worthy of that position. Like I said, I was a female in a male-dominated um, profession. I was often told that it couldn't be done and it just, it drove me. It made me, okay, okay, you said that the last person that went higher than the position I'm in took them 10 fucking years to do. Well, let's see what I can do. And I learned the ins and outs from the best, watching the best, mimicking what they were doing. That person would get to work literally an hour before their time, before their clock in time, so that they can see the products and everything that was going to be run in that facility that day. I started doing the same thing on my shift. Why? Because a lot of people just go to their work, clock in and clock out. They just do what is expected of them. And like I said, if you know how to work hard, you will be able to achieve whatever it is that you want. So I started going the extra mile. Like I said, I started just watching the best, mimicking them until I got it down, until I was proficient at it, that I had supervisors and superiors and managers seeking me on my break or on my lunch because they couldn't figure out where a certain product was. And I knew exactly where it was. All the emails that were going back and forth through corporate, it had my name on it. 
because they would ask what's going on with this, what's going on with that. And I knew the ins and outs of everything that was going on. So what happened? In a two year spam, I got a higher ranking position. I became manager of transportation. When everybody was telling me it couldn't be done. And let me tell you, did it piss people off? Hell yeah. And they probably have the right to feel that way. But you know how I seen it? You were comfortable. Or you decided that you didn't deserve that position and that's the reason why you kind of self-sabotage yourself and you said, you know what, I'm not even going to try. Why am I telling you this crazy story? <laughs> Because it comes down to your belief system. It comes down to what you believe. So if what you believe has limiting beliefs that are causing blockages in your life, that are causing setbacks in your life, then maybe you should start working and healing those aspects to you to get you to the point of genuinely and truly believing what you're telling yourself in those affirmations or what you're telling yourself you're going to experience. And the more you do this, the more you start to believe it. And keep in mind, it takes more or less 17 to 21 days for your brain, right? For your subconscious to create a habit. The moment it creates a habit, it's the same thing with faith. The moment you believe something and you keep putting your energy and effort towards that belief system, Within 17 to 21 days, your subconscious already sees it as a reality. What does that mean? Therefore, it shall manifest. So if you put in the work in changing your way of thinking, if, th if you've been trying to get a higher position and it just hasn't happened and they keep passing you by and they keep passing, I get it. You're frustrated. You're pissed. I would be too. But instead of that discouraging you, let it feed your motivation and your focus to say, you know what, this is going to be the last time that they fucking oversee me. I'm going to kick ass. I'm going to outshine everybody else. I'm going to get it done. So that when that review comes up or when that other position opens up, I am the one they're going to be speaking about. And you match your effort and your work ethic, and you shall experience that. It's the same thing in relationships with love. If you continuously keep going through this loop of dealing with nothing but toxic people or people that, you know, cheat on you or people that are giving you situationships, it's time you realize that you deserve better. And the reason why you're, you know, continuously attracting people that are emotionally unavailable is because you yourself are emotionally unavailable. So keep telling yourself a different story. You're the one that decides what is being written in your book, what is being written in your life, what is unfolding, what experiences are coming in and out. Of course, we have to understand that there is other people around us, right? Our family, our loved ones, they also have free will. They also can do or not do certain things that, you know, life happens. But you have the right and the power to change your circumstance, your situation, your belief system, to transform it in a completely different way, in the way you want it to go. But it's working on that belief system. The last conversation I had with um, a fellow practitioner, we were having this conversation and I was like, you know what, <laughs> I'm going to talk about it on the podcast and I will give different variations of examples for you to understand that you can literally implement this in every aspect of your life. It comes down to your belief system. Now, if you want to go old school and you want to talk about religion or God or, you know, if, if you're Christian, if you're Catholic, think of it this way. In the Bible, it says 
that God dwells within you. What do you think that means? A lot of the Bible, by the way, is metaphorical. Which is why us witches use a lot, a lot of, of you know, the Psalms in the Bible. It is literally a spell book. No offense. But it's the truth. It says God dwells within you. What do you think that means? It also says, you know, that God created you to his image. What do you think that means? You are God. Because there is no separation from consciousness. There is no separation. We are all intertwined and connected. You were created in his image because you are him. You are her. You are the one that decides. You do something, you go to the store and you steal. Let's just say you stole a gum, right? And you feel horrible about it afterwards, after you did the crime, <laughs> right? And you feel bad about it and then something bad happens. Because you know deep down inside it was wrong. And when you feel like something deep down is wrong, that's your beliefs. Have you ever heard someone saying, I don't get why this person is such a shitty person and they're thriving. Why are all the good ones, why are all of us the good ones struggling? Why are all of us the ones that are kind hearted get taken advantage of the most? Yeah, they're probably narcissistic. They're probably shitty people. You're probably right. But why do you think that is? Because they don't see wrong in what they're doing. Goes back to how they were raised. They don't see wrong in their doing. A lot of those are vibrating from, like I said, survival mode. So they don't think it's wrong. So they don't punish themselves. Understanding this concept is literally going to transform and change your life. You are the co-creator of your life. Why do you think that is? Because you decide. You decide what you deserve. You decide in what areas of your life you're punishing yourself because you have remorse or regret. I have clients that, you know, cheated on their spouse and ended up divorcing and end up getting married to someone else and it's a horrible person and they're like, I carry this, you know, I look back and you know, I, I did them so wrong and, and I regret it so much. And that's why they keep experiencing setbacks because they continuously keep punishing themselves. This is why shadow work is important. We have to release whatever aspect in you that you feel shame, that you feel embarrassment, that you feel regret, that you feel remorse. Something a lot of people don't talk about, and I don't even hear practitioners talk about this, probably speaks to the lack of knowledge, right? Everyone's a practitioner nowadays. <clears throat> you can lift your karma. Yep, you can lift your karma. How? Shadow work. Forgiving yourself. Letting go of those ties. Understanding that whatever it was that you did in the past, you were probably horrible. We've all been horrible at some point in our lives. Let me tell you, when I came out of my marriage, I was a horrible person. <laughs> I was extremely selfish, and let me tell you, I was thriving. Not to say it's, it was a bad thing, but what I'm saying is we've all have experienced fuck-ups, right? Where I now, looking back, I'm like, dude, I was a horrible person. 
Did I see it that way then? No, I didn't. I deserved it. I deserved to do what I wanted. But I also understood that there was a lot of people in that point in time in my life that the universe brought into my life, that they were kind heart, kind hearted, genuine, authentic people that I didn't appreciate. That made me realize now I was horrible then. Like I said, we are all humans. We all have the right to fuck up. That is part of li- That's the beauty of life. But learning to forgive yourself because that was an older version of yourself. You are creating yourself every single day. You know how people say, In one day, your life can change. It genuinely can. Truly. Right? I'm sure all of you guys have experienced that at some point in your life. If I hadn't met that person, right? (laughs) Or if that hadn't happened, or when this happened, it was the, you know, my life changed completely. Positive or negative, whatever it is. I'm sure you've experienced it. Why not assume that your life can be transformed and changed for the positive and for the better. Tomorrow. You are the one that decides. This is why sometimes I do have my Capricorn. (laughs) The Capricorn in me has a tendency of, you know, putting people in their place when they try to victimize themselves. Not to say that there are no victims out there. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is people that have a tendency of playing the victim role, right? They're horrible people and they continuously keep blaming everyone else. I have no patience for that. And I quickly chin check them. And I'm like, listen, the more you convince yourself that it is others outside of you that are creating all this chaos in your life, the less power you have. And the more you seek it, because you often feel like you have no control over your life. The moment you decide, you know what? A lot of my fuck ups have a lot to do with the decisions I make. I don't make the smartest decisions, but you know what? Moving forward, I will. And you stop blaming and start stepping up, stepping into your power. Because that is power. I hope I was able to answer the questions of those of you guys that have asked me if I believe in the threefold law. I know that we went into different areas, but the reason why I wanted to talk about it was because I feel it's important to understand truly the power that you possess. We go about life, you know, I see it all the time and it's very sad to think that people go about life thinking that someone outside of themselves is the one that decides the horrible things that happen in their life. Not to say if you've experienced something horrible in your life, I'm not saying that you deserved it or that you would even decide that. I'm not saying that. Keep in mind, I did say we also have to understand that others around us have free will. But whatever was in the past is in the past. The past could never be undone. But we got to keep moving. We heal those aspects to the old version of ourselves. Put yourself together. It's frustrating to see when people post on social media about being broken. You're not broken. You're whole. That's disempowering you. That's giving up your power. Whatever was done in the past, whether you were young or old, it doesn't matter. It, is, it was done. It cannot be undone. But you learn from that. You heal from that. 
You take your power back. You step into your power and you decide what you want to believe in. And make sure that that belief empowers you. Make sure that what you believe in makes you a better person. Not for others around you, but for yourself. My beautiful Anne, rest in peace, was extremely spiritual, religious. And I had many conversations with her and... I will never forget that she would always say, so long as what you believe in makes you a better person and makes you happy, then keep doing that. If the experiences that you're having in your life are not what you want and they're not making you better and they're creating depression, anxiety, stress, which are all related and connected, to the nervousness of thinking of the uncertain future because that's what it is. Learn to take a step back. Learn to focus right now, right in the present, in the moment. If you have nothing to be grateful about, understand this, you are able to experience another day. And keep telling yourself that. The more your heart grows in gratitude and thankfulness, the more blessings come your way in very unexpected ways. So with that, I hope I gave you something to think about. I hope that whatever it is that you believe in empowers you and strengthens you and gives you the power that you truly possess. If you guys enjoyed, like, share, comment, and I will see you guys soon. Till then, bye.